Hey, how are you guys? The kids looked forward to weekly video calls with their father, who was living abroad. I thought that after his tenure was over, we could live happily together again as a family of four. But my name is Michelle. I got married to my husband Ian, whom I have been dating since high school, right after university. It was our first love and had a whirlwind romance, like in movies. Our marriage was smooth sailing for five years. We were blessed with two children. His work was going well and was working abroad on a project by himself. Raising two boys alone was a challenge, but being a full-time housewife with the help of my parents, I was getting by. It was a weekly video call with Ian that night. The kids were excited to be able to talk with him. By the scheduled time, I, the kids, and even my parents gathered in front of the computer. It was like a big family event. To be honest, I was longing to speak to him alone about my struggles and our future plans, which I couldn't let the kids hear. Hoping I would have a chance, I prepared my computer in front of my family in the living room. Hey, how are you, kids? Have you been good boys? Ian smiled broadly when he saw their happy faces. He seemed to be well and looked the same as ever. The kids were busy talking nonstop about what they'd done and asked him when he would be back. My parents also enjoyed watching their bubbly conversations. I guess that was what it meant to have smooth sailing and be happy. After the Q and A session was over, the kids were exhausted. That was just as well. Ian lived in a country where there was a 12-hour time difference. They were normally in bed by that time, but for that specific occasion, they took a nap during the day to stay up. We'll put the kids to bed. You guys can talk in private if you like. My parents were considerate and left the living room with them. I appreciated them for doing more than I could expect. We talked for half an hour about the kids' growth and future plans. And Jack finally managed to swim 25 yards the other day. He just wants to swim every day now. And Dean's doing very well in school, and his teacher praised him. I'm looking forward to their future. Lately, I've been thinking, thanks to your work, we have a good life. But when I think about them growing up fast, I want them to have a little more time with you during this sensitive period. Of course, I know it's difficult. No, I understand. But these couple of years are very important for my career. If the project succeeds soon, it will be easier for me to come back. I'll be able to spend more time with you guys then. Let's be strong for them. He encouraged me. After that, I gossiped a bit about mommy friends and asked him about his plan for the day. Soon, I reached the limit of sleepiness. My parents, who had put the kids to bed and returned to the living room, also looked tired. I'm sorry. I'm exhausted now. I have an early start tomorrow, so I'm going to bed. I thought I had hung up the video call. My brain must have shut down already because I turned off only the camera and the speaker, and the call itself was still connected. I must have looked to Ian as if the call had ended. I felt satisfied after having spent some quality time with him. Thank you guys for putting them to bed. Let's recharge our energy too. Good night. I was about to get up from my seat. Okay, one thing is done. Hello, I'm done with the family call. You can come over now. I heard Ian's happy voice calling someone. Huh? Still on the line? Apparently, someone was coming to his place. He mentioned earlier that he had to go to the project site later for an inspection. I wondered if it was someone from work. I had a bad feeling when I heard his overly sweet voice. The sleepiness that had made me feel as if I could sleep as a log earlier had vanished. I told myself that it was probably just a colleague picking him up. Hopefully, it was just unfounded anxiety, and nothing was going to happen. Even though I thought so, I clicked on the record button on the screen. Ian had left the room to take a shower, and only the bed was in the view. My parents also seemed to be a little uncomfortable with the tone of his voice. He can't hear us now, can he? My mom asked in a hushed voice. The camera and microphone are off right now, so he can't. 
My dad warned me that it wasn't nice to peek into his privacy and that I should have turned it off. But just a little bit until he leaves for work. I want to see how he prepares for work, please. I persisted and the three of us continued to watch the screen together. About 15 minutes later, the doorbell rang and I heard Ian saying, Hold on, coming! I still didn't know what to expect. And there was nothing wrong with taking a shower before going to work and having his colleague pick him up. I still couldn't help but feel uneasy and suspicious about his cheerful voice. I saw him get out of the shower and walk across the bedroom in his bathrobe. I thought to myself, oh no, it's finally happening. He wouldn't wear a bathrobe when his colleague is picking him up, right? The closet is probably in his bedroom. My mom was anxiously talking to my dad and me. Then we heard a woman's voice in the distance. We saw her, probably in her 20s, with her hand wrapped around his waist, come into the screen. I wondered if happiness was something that could fall apart so suddenly. Thinking so, I stared at the screen with my parents. This is it, isn't it? It's unbelievable. I tried to come up with something better to say, but my throat felt tight and nothing else came out. I'm going to hunt him down. Otherwise, I won't be able to calm myself. I'm keeping quiet for now for the recording of important evidence, but I'm going to make sure he takes responsibility for this. My dad was furious. Ian was lying on the bed with the woman kissing and playing with her breasts on the screen. I felt like a fool, wondering what I was doing. I wish we could go on another trip. We spent quite a bit last time. Do you still have any money to spare? She asked while showing him the pictures of their trip on her phone. Don't worry, I've told the accounting guy to separate my paycheck stubs. My wife doesn't know how much I get paid. I also handle the family savings, so even if I spend a little, she won't know. He was very relaxed. While I was raising the kids here, he was enjoying a trip with his mistress. Moreover, as far as I heard, they went to a place I had repeatedly told him that I wanted to go. And then sure enough, they started doing the deed. I felt nauseated, but my parents and I watched them on the screen with blank expressions. My dad said, You don't have to watch all this. Go to bed now. It's harmful to your eyes. I'll have to see it as evidence later anyway, so let me just get it over with. I put on a brave face and replied nonchalantly. After they were done, and just as the mistress was about to leave, I quietly turned off the computer. It was already 3 a.m. We all must have been overwhelmed by mixed feelings, and I could see that my parents were exhausted. Guys, let's go to bed for now. We went back to our respective bedrooms, but I could not sleep at all. My body was too tired to move, but my brain was in a state of shock. My heart was beating 100 miles an hour. A sense of loss, a sense of despair, and an indescribable sense of closure overwhelmed me. I thought about what to do. I wondered if it could have been all a dream when I woke up in the morning. Who was that woman? So many thoughts were going around and round in my head. As I was fighting the sick feeling and trying to regulate my breathing, the morning came. What's wrong, Mom? You don't look well. My kids were worried. Sorry, I was talking to your dad until late and didn't sleep much last night. I made up a little lie. Your mom is tired today. Nana and I will drop you guys off. My parents took over my task for me. Get well soon, Mom. Let's go. The encouragement for the pure and kind kids almost brought tears to my eyes. I tried hard not to cry and send them off with a smile. I needed to get some sleep. I couldn't think straight. I drank a glass of water and went back to the bedroom. Ian was supposed to come back in two months. I had to prepare as much as I could before then and protect my kids no matter what. I swore to myself as I fell asleep. I must have been more exhausted than I thought. I slept until my kids came back. Mom, wake up! Grandpa wanted takeout today, so we got a pizza! Hurry, hurry! Jack woke me up, and I staggered into the dining room. 
Mommy, are you okay? Dean looked at me worried. Yes, I'm okay, thank you. I'm feeling much better seeing you boys. Did you have fun today? I tickled them, pretending to be cheerful. Stop it, no! They were relieved to see me looking joyful. Seeing them happily play around, my parents also looked a little relieved. You can't fight a war on an empty stomach. As I ate my pizza, I thought about the future. First, I told myself to find out who the woman was and then took a mental note to make an appointment with an attorney. There was no end to what I would have to do if I started thinking about custody, alimony, and so on. For the time being, I thought it would be best to consult an attorney. I didn't want to spread the rumors by consulting my friends. Fortunately, I was a housewife and had time during the day. After dinner, I put the kids to bed and called my parents into the living room. About yesterday, there's no point in dwelling on it. If I didn't have kids, I would have procrastinated. Strangely enough, when I thought about them, I became calm. I need your help. Then without a pause, my dad said, Of course. While you were sleeping, I called an attorney I used to know. I know him from when one of my friends was cheated on by his wife. He said proudly. I was very grateful, but I knew it was nothing to be proud of. I turned to look at my mom. I will help you as much as I can. I trusted Ian so much, but he betrayed us. I wouldn't be satisfied if I didn't do anything. She readily agreed. I wasn't sure what she was planning, but she seemed to be enjoying the situation. I made an appointment with the attorney this weekend. Can you be there? My dad asked about my schedule, and my mom said, Don't worry, I'll watch the kids. The next day, we started rolling. We had two months until Ian's visit. We wanted to settle everything before then. First, I checked all the SNS. It was surprisingly easy to find out about his mistress. She worked for the same company as him. She was a secretary at an overseas branch. I went to his company and explained the situation to his local boss to get his help. His boss was at first puzzled, but as soon as I showed him the video of the infidelity, he held his head in his hands. I am very sorry. I will share the situation with my supervisor and take the appropriate action. Next, we discussed filing for divorce, alimony, and the necessary information with the attorney. The video evidence of his infidelity alone was conclusive, and I also had a copy of the bank statement and contact information of the mistress. It was almost perfect, so I was told not to worry. Of course, I had to report it to my parents-in-law. At first, they denied the accusation and said I was making it up to get alimony. But as soon as I showed them the video, they fell quiet and apologized to me frantically. We are so sorry. We will do everything we can to help you. The most painful part was explaining the situation to my kids. I honestly didn't know what to tell them. If I lied and told them that he couldn't come home for a long time because of work, they would grow up looking forward to visiting him without question. I didn't want to do that. I made up my mind and told them. Your dad lied to me in a very unforgivable way. I'm very hurt. I can't live with him anymore when he comes back. I'm sure you guys will miss him, but will you come and stay with me? They didn't seem to understand the gravity of the situation yet, but they said they wanted to be with me. I couldn't help but cry. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Then came the day Ian returned. I told him that I had reserved a private room at a restaurant to welcome him home with the family. I waited for him with my parents, my in-laws, and his boss. As soon as he arrived at the restaurant, Is there anything you need to tell us? My father-in-law asked him, managing to suppress his anger. What's going on, boss? All of you? What's this all about? He was flabbergasted by the situation. There's no point in keeping a secret. All I need is your signature. I slammed the divorce papers, alimony charge, and a letter of termination from his company. He was stunned and frozen, and my in-laws started yelling at him. 
I told him to speak to my attorney and left the restaurant with my parents. After that, I want to start over with you. It was wrong. I love only you with all my heart. His forgive me messages rolled in non-stop, so I told him to go through my attorney and blocked him. He staked out in front of my house a few times and tried to clear the path through my parents. He intentionally bumped into them and spoke to them in a strangely friendly manner. He tried various ways to get close to me, including talking to mutual acquaintances. Of course, I brushed them off. I called the police when he showed up at my house, and my parents completely ignored him. I told my friends the whole story and put the word out. He was completely isolated. I was told later that when I called the police, he got a little out of control. He was charged with assault and battery, and joined the National Criminal Database. On the day of the court hearing, he asked to see the children at least once a month. When I asked him how dare he come to see them, he shrunk and fell silent. He did have the right to see them, so if they asked to see him, he was allowed to do so with me present for a limited time. Since he came back, he had been having a pretty spectacular time. He lost his family, was disowned by his parents, and was eventually laid off from his job. He was living on the edge while working part-time jobs to pay alimony. The salary he lied about and the savings, which were used up in the end, were used against him to make up a considerable amount of alimony. He also broke up with his mistress. He couldn't afford to pay child support, so his parents were paying on his behalf as a way of apology to their grandchildren. He was seeing the kids in the beginning, but as they got to the age when they understood what had happened, the less often they asked to see him. From the day I found out about his affair to the day of divorce passed like a storm. It's a funny story now. To be honest, I don't have an ounce of sympathy or sadness for him anymore, no matter where he is or what he's going through. As for me, I invested the alimony in stocks and was very successful. I was able to send my kids to college without any difficulties. Now that my kids are independent, I bought a small house in the countryside and I'm enjoying a slow life by myself. What I enjoy most now is seeing my adorable grandchildren. Although it's not a convenient place like the city with everything you need, it has a lot of nature, clean air, and a very pleasant community. I don't have a lot of reasons to go to the city, so I'm satisfied with this tranquil place. I have a family who loves me very much. My sons come to visit me with their families during the summer vacation. I spend my days thinking, I'll never want to give up this happiness.